Bing, we're live. It is the Kentbeck Scrum. It is Sam and Michael. Uh, my updates are today. I have I gave a estimate for the Dree dashboard project to the Dree folks um, based on the story voting that we did at the end of the marketing meeting yesterday. Um, and yes, I am negotiating with them. Uh, I think that the um, Oh, hey, Matt. Um, the estimate that I gave Dree was, um, I think, probably slightly more than they were expecting, which I think is, I think is where we want to be. So we're kind of like negotiating down from there. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think we're sort of talking about a good sort of ten day, ten day chunk of work to be paid for, um, with you know more work potentially to come after. So I'm in the process of trying to assemble team um they're keen to know you know sort of what they're saying like well that's okay if we're going to pay at uh, you know good good rates we want to know more about the people and so i've been reaching out to everyone to get uh, th th those who are interested uh, get resumes and put together kind of like a a team overview document to um kind of give uh dream more of a feeling about who would be involved in the project um yeah so uh, yeah thanks thanks to matt and others for for uh, passing in resumes. Michael, if you've got a uh, resume, um, I'd be interested to to see that, or just even whatever portions of it that you might be interested to contribute. Uh, in case you're interested in being on the team, um, yeah, that's taken up most of my time today. In the background, I have deployed the latest components to website one. Uh, so now, when you're logged in, it shouldn't say "Please sign up" um, and fix another bug. Uh, yeah, that's that's about that. It's, it's Wednesday. Is there more stuff supposed to be happening today? I um, I don't think I'm blocked by anything. No. I just need no. to get this. Um, I need to get this uh, stuff done for for Dre, um, and hopefully get a green light on the on the project because that would be quite a big win for us to have that uh, you know paid project. I, mean, I think we can maybe take. I'm sort of imagining that there would be myself and three other people. On the project, and we need a mix of um, experience levels. So, um, and also, it's, it would actually be, you know, like pe I think it's for people would need to have availability to sort of work seriously on it over the next two or three weeks. So that you know, some people are, are you know who already have uh, full time jobs are not necessarily in a position to to participate. But there we go. So that's that's me. Um, yeah, um, dream blotting out my son, um, Michael. How are things going with you? Good. I just worked on that little feature yesterday to hide mm -hmm. the button mm -hmm. and make some adjustments to it. Mm -hmm. And then I attended the afternoon scrum. Huh? And we voted on some met, um, wiki, wiki dashboard, wiki yeah. dashboard features. And then I decided to try and get it running. Mm hmm. So, with some help from Sage, I got all the tests passing and it's running in development on my Mac. Oh, so, cool. this morning I was just looking at how they're trying to decipher how they're doing React. Uh -huh. Like the, the plumbing, you know, like how they, oh, yeah. how they build it, how do they get it on the page and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think, I think some of what they're doing is like, an Go old on. way of doing it. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. That maybe that's, I think that didn't say say that they they did it before um, Redux was around. Uh, not just that, but also just some of the things they use uh -huh. are older. Like I don't know. JavaScript has this thing like every three months. Mm -hmm. They like no, they completely change how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 Joy. Which I, don't, I don't know how people put up with that, but well, you know, some people are masochists. Um, but uh, yes, yes. Oh, well, that's an, that's great to have you getting involved in that in that project. Yeah. Cool. So nothing, nothing blocking you in particular. No. Great. Cool. Excellent. Thanks, Michael. Matt, how are things going with you? Oh, good. Um, I just looked at a couple of things. There's. Still a real subtle bug with the sorting and yeah, problems. and it it's very strange. It's I, I stepped through it in the um, 
Mm-hmm. That one project, SHF project, returns a nil uh, last push date. Mm-hmm. So there is something. The code is is admittedly messed up, but it's not what um I think it was Laura had thought. Mm-hmm. I think but, it's, uh, uh, it's Ashley. Ashley who's looking at it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I, I looked at that, but I kind of gave up for the moment because it's. Something real subtle, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it may, like as you're saying, the difference. It, it may require refactoring some code first yeah. before we get to the bottom of it. it it's uh, it feels like. Oh, oh, well, it's kind of one of these things where, um, you know, we've we've got a number of issues like these that are like real issues faced by real users of uh, website one. There's another one which is like Pat's um, videos not appearing in the through the agile pot bot slack ping thing and then there's something like lara's video is not appearing in the site and so on and kind of if we were uh you know fully funded you know everybody being paid it's like this would be like you know this stuff is we've got to get this stuff fixed for these customers however um it's difficult to prioritize them when that side of it is not directly bringing in revenue at the moment so so yeah i would i would so love to get um the these fixed and uh yeah but let's let's Great that great that you are exploring it and that you're recording what you're finding out it, yeah. in the ticket. I love it. It's wonderful. That's I think that's going to be extraordinarily helpful uh, going forward. But yeah. Okay, so that's side. And the only other thing I'm working on is event manager. I did uh, push. Uh, I mean, uh, merge a PR that Arash had looked at and said it looked okay for adding a sorting uh, filtering by date. Mm-hmm. So that that's good, and then um, then I I chatted with you about creating a middleman site, maybe to mm-hmm. to, to kind of test out how we're gonna call the API or you know a number of things, shared yeah. assets. I, mm-hmm. I think that's a great that's a great experiment to do. Richard. Yeah, I mean, I was sort of saying to Marion on on Sunday, like the two I think interesting things were. Uh, one that JavaScript ticket that you were looking at, and then also was you know playing around with the middleman site, and and she went for the JavaScript one. So yeah, it's it's totally there. Like I think playing around and experimenting with middleman, uh, great thing for you to uh, to do. Exper- what I I haven't done is I haven't set up middleman with JavaScript on the middleman site to consume stuff from some other microservice. Although yeah. of course DHH has told us that microservices and that's just only for when you can't fit the entire thing in your head. And so we should be very wary of microservices. Although you see all the discussions going on, like you know, we've got counter, we've got Martin Fowler blog posts saying both start with microservices and don't start with microservices. How are we supposed to know what to do if people won't tell us? <laughs> yeah, so that's where I figured out. I've, I've read enough opinions, and I just got <laughs> it. Yeah, because you can spend all day get looking, reading other people's opinions. Of absolutely, how to... absolutely. Yes, yes, indeed. But um, just on that one, I the shared assets. I'm looking at it, and I, it looks like I have to look into the Rails pipeline to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the trying to do the same thing, and what pieces of it you pull out, and what you don't from the pipeline. And I don't know. It's a little yeah. It's a little strange. Um, sure. like just creating an npm package, we could do that. But yeah. We, I mean, Go then you'd want another repo for that. And yeah, I mean that's something that I mean Michael and I were looking at. We we created what did we do, Michael? What did we do when we had from a middleman site? We we had some like was it just a, a couple of CSS files that we were sharing with the um the the ghost blog um as a way of sharing the styles, and we ended up that was one of the reasons we kind of stopped doing the ghost blog was just to not have to synchronize those styles, right? Yeah, we had another repo or something. Yeah, where the, where the theme was, right? And I think the, 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 there was the theme for the ghost blog, and that and then there was the code for the ghost blog. Yeah, and it was. Um, I mean, the thing that they were doing at one point at Makers Academy is that they had a Bower thing, which I don't even know if they ever actually got working in the way that they wanted it to. And but Michael has uh, my my sense that Bower is out of favor is just no one's talking about it, and Michael tells me that John's not using it. And we ended up building the blog twice, basically. We did, we did. Um, uh, the but so 
we, we're moving like Michael, you're the one who's told me more about most or driven us towards like using NPM for the asset management, at least in terms of the JavaScripts. Are we, uh, you get a sense that people are using NPM for a CSS um, management as well? Uh, for inside of a Rails project, it's some people do, but other people say it's not sane, like you should no. use Rails. Yeah. I mean, it you... depends on what you're in. Uh, I think some people say with middleman, I think there's actually a package. So particularly you're talking about like, um, are we talking about middleman and like potentially react? Well, I mean, I think we're doing more like, so for example, let's say that you have a middleman site and a rail site, and you'd like both of them to have the same style. So right. do, you, do you, you know, basically just copy the same CSS things across them and have it undry, or do you somehow publish the CSS in some other form and, and have it, have it av available? I mean, there's things like that. Bootstrap comes in a gem, right? So right. presumably, if, if, you, if, you, if you were happy with it being two um, Ruby projects, then the, the CSS stuff could be published as part of a gem. I don't know if that's the best option, but. Yeah, I don't, it's funny, I'm reading this whole article here and the guy, they don't say how they're doing it. it they just yeah. say, the good news is that all the magic is performed by the Rails uh, asset pipeline. <laughs> the trick is figuring out which parts should be shared across projects. And which parts should I mean so <laughs> like a node package right right like you could literally put anything you want it in a node package and you could get a node script yeah. that just copies and pastes uh, right can paste those assets to some configurable directory right I, I'm but, but presumably I mean the you know, node package. like like I'm yeah, not, like, it, like it, at the simplest thing you could just have a node package that has your CSS in it right 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 and then what it does is wherever the hell it needs to go for whatever when, when you're going to like deploy it to production side mm -hmm. you npm install it and then <clears throat> you have a you have your own script mm -hmm. that basically calls out to the npm script inside the package it requires right. it and there's a configurable output directory where css goes and literally all it does when you call it Mm. That configurable output directory is it just writes the CSS to that directory, mm -hmm. right? But it's, yeah, and that that all sounds great. But you could just as easily do that with a gem as opposed to npm, right? There's no no particular reason to prefer npm to a gem, is there? Um. Well, I mean. I'm not sure how. Like, do they? I get. I, I imagine there must be some way to do it with a gem. Right, because like Bootstrap, Bootstrap, you can integrate Bootstrap with your Rails project and your middleman using a gem, right? Right, but npm is kind of cooler than gems. Or agnostic, I guess. Like, the, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe. But that's a yeah. I, it's it's all good. I, I think it's it's probably worth looking at exactly what um, Matt's talking about doing. Is it's yeah, it's there's worth you're looking, doing. looking around and seeing what a few people uh, are, are doing, um, and um, I mean yeah, most gems. most gems with CSS are usually for Rails, right? Because they they basically integrate, right? Them. But they also have them for. Um, I'm for sure, the, they have for, them. For, yeah, for middleman, they yeah. Them. No, you could. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think that's our, our our scrum. We've we've all updated each other on what we're doing and um, had a nice chat as well. Uh, I should get back to finishing up this proposal for. Um, Tree that will hopefully unlock lots of cash. Um, anything else that we need to coordinate or organize? No. Are you having fun as an administrator? Uh, sort of. Yeah, it has its uh, high points. I mean, and I, and I'm um, well. I'm excited about this bit of administration that might actually lead to uh, money for coding, so that we can spend a lot of time coding over the next few weeks. That would be nice. Um, but yeah. So anyway, Michael, so send me the details of you if you fancy, and I'll. You incorporate that into the proposal. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye for now. See you both tomorrow for, for, for mob programming, the usual time. <laughs>